Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes, and this is a handover of an Auto Trail V Line Sport 636. As we start the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle first, the first point you get in is your LPG filler point. So this is a underslung gas tank on the on the V Line models, which is 25 litres. And all you need to do is to fill up, go to your local petrol station that sells LPG. Pop it in there to be in it fitting, twist the filler gun and pull the trigger back. That'll then allow the valve to stay open in the filler when you press the button on the pump until simply it doesn't take any more gas. Once you've pressed the button and it's stopped, that is the gas tank full. And from empty, it'll take about 20 to 25 pound, depending on how much you're paying for LPG. But you can download the app and find your local LPG centers and it's a lot easier to find LPG instead of a bottle when you're abroad because it's the same fitting whereas the bottles aren't. Here you will have your external shower point. So it's a cold water fed shower. So there's a hose pipe connection that goes in here when you remove the black cap and a trigger gun on the other end of the hose and you'll be able to hose off the dogs, yourselves, the bikes, depending on you must have the pump on for the pressurised water to come through, otherwise you won't get any water. Right next to it, we've got your mains 240 volt hookup point. So this is where you'd hook up if you were on a site or if you were charging the vehicle at home. What you need to do is get your hookup lead, lift the collar, lift the flap on the van and slide it on. Hook the van up first, then the site and do it in reverse order when unhooking to avoid getting electric shock should your lead ever become frail or um, broken with the weather conditions. You've got two taps down here, so you've got a blue one, which is your fresh water drain point. So if you've taken on contaminated water, you drain it down for the winter, or you're simply not using the van for a couple of weeks, you want to drain off your fresh water, which is your clean water, just so it's not sitting in there. And then you've got the grey one, which is your dirty water. So dishes water, hand basin water, shower water. Again, drain this off in the winter, make sure no water's left in the van. But normally on the way out of your site, you'd pull over the grid in the floor, you'd open the valve, and you'd allow your dirty water out because you've got no real reason to drive around with dirty water unless you've been wild camping. Get rid of it on a site because it'll impact your payload and it'll increase how much fuel the vehicle needs to use. So your miles per gallon will go down because you're carrying more weight. At the back here we do have your cassette. So to open your cassette, you use the key, which is a habitation key. Once you've opened it, you can push both catches in. And then to get the cassette out, Lift the orange handle and slide the cassette free of the motorhome. You can either carry it or you can wheel it to your site disposal point, which is normally beside your toilet block. And then to empty it, remove this cap, press this button, orange button, that was a bit of air and stops the glugging, and tip the content of the cassette out. Once you've drained it, it's now time to rinse it. So there's normally a tap there. Put a small amount of water in, give it a rinse, and then go in with a cap full of chemical, which is 125 mil. So you either go in with 125 mil of chemical, or you can go in with one tablet, which is a pint of water into here, and drop a tablet in here. You can either do it like this, or you can do it by opening the blade on the toilet and dropping one down the toilet, which I'll show you how to do when using the toilet inside. Coming around to the back of the motorhome, you've got your high level brake light and built in underneath there is a reversing camera. With it being the sport, you get the tailgate. So you get some storage in here. You've got storage under there and a compartment where you can access through into the rear lounge. And then should you not be able to get your boot lid off, you've got a Feel safe, that's why there's a little cut out here in the back cushion to open it from inside the van. And then in here, you've got your table leg, you've got some brand new chocks with it being a new van. This goes on the other end of the table leg and you can use the table inside the motorhome, but it's an outdoor leg so it can stand outside. So underneath your awning, 
You can put your hookup lead up in there, which is in the vehicle at the moment, so that can go in there. And coming out the passenger side, you've got your awning, which we can show you on collection. How that operates with the winding handle that's in the vehicle. To fill it with water when you arrive on your site, or if you're going wild camping, you'll have to take water with you. This is your water filler point. So again, using the habitation key, this is a lockable cap. When it's just spinning, it's locked. When you're able to push it in and grip it, and take it out, it's open. Grab yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe connections, as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. Put the flat end of the hose into the motorhome, connect the other end to the tap, and fill it with water until it overflows, which means it's full. Or you can look on your control panel and see how much water that you've got on board at any one time. Opening the door, you've got your step, which will retract automatically with the engine. Make sure the engine's off and you'll be able to pop it back out. External barbecue points, so get yourself some scissors or some pliers and clip this connection off. Go and buy yourself some orange gas hosing and two Jubilee clips. Pop that in on one end of the hose into here pop the other end onto your Kadak and then turn the tap on and it'll use the bottle on board or should I say the gas tank on this one instead of carrying a spare bottle to operate your barbecue fly screen on there as well keep the unwanted guests out Diesel opens with the main fade key to fill with diesel and you've got AdBlue underneath which is a 19 litre tank on the Ducatos. It'll tell you on the dash when it needs it and top it up as soon as you can. You can buy it on the pumps or you can buy it in the drums and keep one in the back. Garage compartment if you want but it's entirely up to you and a full 19 litres will do 5,500 miles. But at about around 4,000 miles you'll get the warning. Once you've done 4,000 miles should I say you'll get the warning to say it's time to refill your AdBlue system. Do it as soon as possible, otherwise the vehicle can go into limp mode or fail to start if it goes down to zero. Tire pressure, so five and a half bar, which is 79.5 PSI. Underneath the passenger seat, you do have a tool kit, which is a jackknife brace and a tornai. And with it being a Decato, engine batteries underneath this compartment. So lift that up if you want to put a charger on or if you need to change the engine battery in years to come. Bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard, so just give that a pull and you pop your bonnet. And then you do have your fluids. The main fluid you're going to want is this one, your screw wash. Then you can lift these three tabs out and fill your coolant. And next to it you have your brake fluid. Put an oil filler. It's electronic dipstick, so you do it through the dash. There's no dipstick anymore. The same with it's electronic steering rack, so there's no power steering fluid. You've got an earth here for giving or receiving a jump start because the engine battery is underneath the cab floor. And then between the air intake and the fuse board, there's a rectangular cover, which you put your key in, lift up, and you've got a positive terminal for giving or receiving a jump start weight plate here so three and a half ton gross vehicle weight six ton motorhome and trailer if you put a tow bar on so that's your train weight can't go over six ton and then you've got your pain code here for any touch-ups you may need so that's the pain code just there on the so to operate your 12 volt control panel if you are hooked up you'll have mains 230 volt and if you don't, you'll just have 12 volt off your leisure battery. And then the switches on the left hand side, so the top left hand side is your master switch. So this will turn on 12 volt or 230 volt, depending if you're hooked up or not. So when you come into the van, you want to hit this one first. Then you want to press this one, which is your interior lights master switch. Then they all are switched around the van. One below it is your water. So should you have enough water 
on board, you can turn on the pump, which will pressurize the water to the taps, toilet and shower. And there, tell you, you've got 50% fresh, zero waste. On the right, you've got your awning light, which is a light on the outside of the motorhome. Plus this one, you can view your levels, so you can view your water levels. Your interior temperature and humidity. You can adjust your time on the display panel here. You've got an EC363 control panel, so it's from sergeant, so that's just the data of the sergeant unit. You've got your leisure battery voltage, and it says it's charging there, so you are receiving hookup at the moment. Wait and take the hookup out and get a true reading of your battery. And you've also got your vehicle battery reading. So to operate your whale heat air controls, so on the left hand dial, you've got the heating. And on the right hand dial, you've got the hot water. Both bottom buttons, these here, are reset buttons. So if you ever get a red exclamation mark, you can just press and hold and reset the control panel. They are touch sensitive, so you just wave your hand over the top and they'll activate. So starting off with the heating one. So the plus and the minus is just the temperature of the van. So starting off on the first one, which is a picture of a snowflake, which is frost start, which keeps the vehicle temperature above five degrees. Then you've got nighttime mode, which is approximately 15 degrees. And then you can keep going and you can bring it all the way around to 30 degrees max heat on full orange bar. You've got your source underneath, so you've got gas. So you press the gas, it goes to blue. Once that goes to orange, it is lit on gas, but you'd only use the gas if you were wild camping. If you were on a site, you'd use the electric, which is here. So press and hold and you've got three little dots. So you've got one dot, which is 750 watts of mains power. Two dots, which is 1500 watts of mains power. And three dots, which is three kilowatts of power. So that's exactly the same for the hot water side. And obviously you can see that's gone orange, so it's lit on electric. But check with your sights what amperage they give you, whether they give you 12 or 16, will determine whether you use 1500 or two or three kilowatts. And if you are tripping the vehicle out by using another mains appliance, which is a high voltage appliance, just turn this down to 750 watts or turn it off. Use your appliance and then you can turn it back on. But on most sites throughout the UK, you should be fine. On this side, you've got your water. So again, wave your hand over it. Frost start, keeps the water above th five degrees. 40 degrees of heating your water and 60 degrees of heating your water. Gas, once that goes to orange, it is lit on gas. And then you do have your electric, so 750 watts, 1500 watts, and 3 kilowatts. Reset buttons if you do get that exclamation mark. In the kitchen, you've got the three gas burners. So using the ignition on the front, and making sure that you do have enough gas in the gas tanks, you turn the gas on. So there you've got three lit gas rings. Once you've had them on, if you do, just allow them to go cool before you put the glass lid down. Otherwise, there is a chance you can shatter the glass with the heat. You've got your, making sure your pump's on, you'll be able to use your tap. And you can see there you've got hot water. You can see the steam coming off the water, and that is very hot, that water now. And then underneath, there's your grill pan. You do have your oven and your grill you may want to take your grill pan and oven shelves out when traveling as they can cause a bit of rattling when on the road or you might want to wrap them up in tea towels just to stop them from making noise switch on here does the lights in the kitchen Press the catch and you'll be able to re release the doors and you do have storage in there. Turnbuckle on the drawer 
at the bottom, and this is your cutlery drawer. So you have got one, but make sure the turnbuckle's on to stop it from sliding forward when you're traveling. Underneath the oven, is where you'll find the location of your gas tap. So you've got five gas taps at the back here. Should you ever need to isolate an appliance, you can shut off each individual appliance from there. Obviously you do have a main shut off as well for the tank, which is underneath the vehicle. You've got a big stop cock to turn the tank off. Sure flow water pump. So when the pump's on and when you activate a tap, that'll kick in and start pressurizing the water to the taps and you also do have your boiler so your boiler heats the water and heats the vehicle so this being this the water heater obviously you don't want the water to stay in the heater in the winter when the vehicle's not in use because you can freeze the water in your boiler by leaving it in and then it is a costly mistake to make because it's not covered under your warranty from your manufacturer and it's down to you to replace the boiler and it is a new boiler job so let the water out and what you need to do is turn nothing on when you come into the van open all the taps within the motorhome just to stop any water from sitting in any pipes and or in the tap itself in the middle position of the mixer Open the fresh and the waste outside to allow the waste to drain off, which you'll probably already have drained off because you'll have drained that off before you leave your last site, before you come home. But you want to drain off your fresh if you've got any fresh water in there. And what you want to do with this yellow toggle is it's pointing to the cab, which means it's shut. Point it to the toilet, point it to the driver's side of the vehicle without the pump on and leave it in that position over the time you've got the vehicle not in use over the winter in the storage yard or parked on your driveway. That will stop the water from freezing in, freezing in the boiler and then obviously open your taps, open the fresh and the waste outside and then when you come to reuse the motorhome, do it in reverse. So shut the taps outside, the fresh and the waste, shut all the taps within the motorhome, put the toggle back into this position then you can get your hose pipe and fill the vehicle with water come in put the control panel on put the pump on and open the tap on the cold side first you'll get a pressurized cold water feed straight away go to the hot side it'll cough sputter and make all sorts of noises until you get a free flow of water and what it's doing is it's transferring the water from the cold water tank into the boiler of 10 liters until the system is primed once you get a free flow of water it's primed you do one tap you do them all and then you're good to go for the season also got your microwave in your kitchen area which is a 800 watt microwave and you've got to be hooked up for that to work and it's as simple of either selecting your time or you can just go up in 30 second intervals and press stop once you're ready you may want to take out your your microwave plate when you travel or wrap it up obviously it's in the cardboard at the moment because this vehicle has just been delivered so either take it out or wrap it up as it may cause a little bit of wrapping when on the road but it's entirely up to you to operate your Dometic fridge so you turn it on and off via this button here. So press and hold, and that's the fridge completely off. So you'd have the fridge turned off if you weren't using it, if it was parked up on the driveway or in storage, not getting used. And then when you're ready to use it, just turn it on. So then you've got three sources. So you've got mains electric, so it'll act as a household fridge, but you've got to be on hookup for this to work. You've got gas, if you were wild camping, obviously you would, wouldn't have hookups, so you'd have to use gas to heat, or should I say to cool the fridge. And then you've got battery, which isn't your leisure battery. It's a feed off the engine when the engine is switched on, which is only designed to keep the temperature the same. So if you're moving from site to site, or you're moving from home to site, 
and you've had the fridge hooked up so if you were lucky enough to keep this at home what you'll probably want to do is a few days before you go away you'll want to hook the van up anyway that'll allow it to charge the leisure battery to full put your fridge on on electric and what it'll do is it'll pre-chill your fridge with nothing in the day before you go away you'll probably want to nip off to the shop in the car bring the shopping back pop the shopping in the fridge allow that to chill overnight and then when you're ready to drive just press the battery it's going to fail here now which it is because the engine's not running then when you arrive back on site you go back to mains or to gas if you're wild camping when you are pre-chilling with nothing in the fridge have it on full once you put your shopping in just drop this down and this is your temperature so drop down to three or four being the maximum just so it doesn't freeze the fridge because sometimes it can on five if it's on for a long period of time and then what you'll also want to do is when you're not using the fridge is you want to leave the door open so to leave the door open if you go beside the light there's this little pin here which slides these two toggles out and then if you rest the door upon it the door's loose which will stop smells from growing in the fridge and making the motorhome smell as it's not trapping air within the fridge so make sure that it doesn't trap air within here because it'll start to grow mold and bacteria and then once every so often take everything out and give it a good wipe out with some antibacterial wipes or sprays freezer box there but remember leave your doors open we're not using the motorhome to stop the smells from forming so in the washroom You've got your shower curtain there, which comes around the toilet to stop the toilet from getting wet. And you do have your shower head. So remember when you winterize the van, it's very important that you unclip your shower head from this hose because any water could potentially sit and coil up in here and freeze and bust this pipe in the winter. So if you unscrew it, you lie that in the shower tray and leave the shower mixer tap open. You've got your drop down sink just when you are using it when you fill the sink don't overfill it because what you've got to then do is you've got to push it up and it drains into here and you don't want too much water into there because it's not very deep because it will overfill and it'll flood your shelves and your shower tray so do just be careful with that one Push these in and you've got toiletry cabinets behind the mirrors. And then to operate the toilet, obviously again make sure the pump's on. You can press the blue button here which is your fresh water flush. So, it's, so always flush the toilet first and put a small amount of water in because it helps the seal stay lubricated between the top of the cassette and the bottom of the toilet because you wouldn't want that to go brittle and start to split because then you have to replace it so always flush it first put a bit of water in then you before you use it you want to open the blade so that everything goes into the cassette and to do so you need to push this gray lever which is the blade handle to the right it's now opened the blade you can see directly into the cassette you would use the toilet then you would give it a good flush after use if you have bought the twin packs of aqua chem blue and aqua chem pink the pinks obviously for a header tank which this motorhome doesn't have because it's a fresh water system flush it's not a um individual separate flush like some motorhomes and caravans what you can do is if you pop it into a spray bottle dilute it with water so a little bit in a spray bottle dilute it you can spray the ball it'll give a fragrant smell and it'll clean the ball out flush after use and then you want to bring this back towards you which shuts the cassette off and then when the cassette is full you'll get light underneath the diagram of the cassette indicating that it's full and it's now ready to be taken out and changed and replenished with chemicals. Underneath your seats in the back behind the washroom you do have your leisure battery here so your leisure battery is in a separate battery box so to get access to it just unloosen the strap take the lid off the box and you'll be able to replenish your battery should you ever need to main battery fuses at the back and then you do have 
your AC176 power supply unit. So here you have your system shutdown button. So if you were leaving the vehicle in storage over the winter or parked up and you didn't want a battery, the battery to drain, as you may think you have a, a battery drain, you can turn your system shutdown button off, which will stop all 12 volt running around the vehicle. It'll completely kill it. So then that'll stop any power drain. You've got the heater and charger on 12 volt. Obviously heater does work on gas as well. These need to be pushed in for that to work, but just leave them as they are, don't touch them. Um, and as long as they're pushed in, they'll react to 12 volt, um, 240 volt, sorry. RCD here for if you've tripped the van out, try here before you try your main sights. And then you've got your MCBs and it tells you what they're for there. And this side, you've got your blade fuses so fives tens fifteens twenties go and get a few spare ones of those and carry them with you just in case one does blow a fuse you can replenish it and it lists there uh, what fuse does what so to operate your aftex telly every time you move site you will need to retune the tv as it'll be picking up different signals and to do so grab your remote press the spanner setting And then scroll down all the way at the bottom to the three dots to all settings. Programs. Program tuning and settings you want. Auto tuning. Antenna. Next. Next and it'll find as many channels as it can. It will go really quick until it hits 60% and then it'll start finding some channels. Located just beside the fuse box on the driver's side of the dashboard is your gas level indicator there. So it's telling you that you do have gas in your tank. So there'd be another three dots towards the high if it was a full tank. So it's got just over half a tank of gas in. And this is a 25 litre underslung tank on the V lines and it takes around 20 pound to 25 pound to fill the system from empty. But look here to see how much gas you've got on board and it'll go to red when it hits low if you've got no gas on board which means you've then got to find your local LPG centre and find or find a station that's sold LPG and fill up with LPG. So now in the cab, which is based on the all new Fiat Decato, so it's had a upgraded dashboard. So starting off to the right of the driver, you have your handbrake. So you can pop it on and take it off. Because as standard they come as manuals, this one's been opted as an automatic. But if you haven't opted an automatic, then it will come as a manual six speed manual gearbox passenger and driver electric windows and at the front there you've got adjustment for your mirrors so choose the mirror you want and you'll be able to adjust it you've got the top one and you've got the bottom one being the blind spot and on both driver and passenger doors you've got car blind so slide this forward pull the blind up and then you want to slide this into this little groove here to keep it in place when you're parked up if you want to stop the sun coming through or you want to put them on for an evening to black the, the van out headlight adjustment rear fog light switch and then you've got the stop start disabled button so the stop start will only work should the battery have enough charge in it when you put your foot on the brake on an automatic, which this one is, or if you dip the clutch, take it out of the gear and, and allow the clutch to come back up, it will stop the engine until you come off the brake on the auto or dip the clutch on the manual and it will restart. But it will only work should the battery have enough charge in it. You've got your wipers, so you can push down for one single... Push up for one single wipe and then to keep it going, just adjust it on the side of the stalk 
light indicators and you can flash by pulling the stalk towards you. On the front of the wheel on this side, you've got your cruise control. So you hit that button there and it'll say cruise control ready. Press up to set. If you want to speed up, press up. If you want to slow down, press minus. If you need to cancel it, you can either press the cancel button or hit the foot brake. And then if you want to resume it, just press resume and it'll set the last speed it was set to before the engine was turned off. You do have a limiter as well, so you can press limiter and it'll come up cruise control off, speed limiter ready, and it'll say lim in the bottom. As you can see there, if you press up, it'll go up in one mile an hour increments. I'll press and hold and it'll go up in fives. And it tells you there what the speed limit is set to. And then you've got to press resume for that to work this side you've got your answer a call decline a call voice control and this will scroll through the screen so at the moment you've got a digital speedometer if i go left it will see the average speed and average miles per gallon on trip computer <coughs> b You've got your distance and your traveling times on trip B. You've got your average MPG and speed on trip A. You've got your distance on trip A on traveling times. And then you've got your range of fuel and your average consumption when you're driving. You go up and down as well. So you can go to your JSI and it's just going to tell you your instant fuel consumption. You've got your oil level on page three, which is just scrolling up and down. Your oil temperature, your oil life, your battery voltage, your add blue level, and your service light. Obviously, we do recommend the van get serviced every year. Oil and filter the first service, major service second year, and keeps rolling like that to keep all your warranties up to date. As a motorhome, it doesn't do the mileage that a commercial van can do every year. And then, if you go to page four, and if there was any alerts like add blue level low, fuel level low, um, engine management light came on, it would come up here. And then you've got your setup so you can click into here for your date and your time your units your security lights so it'll have um, courtesy lights where it stays on for a certain length of time once you lock the van say two minutes and then they'll go off so you can get your keys in your door and if you're parked on the drive things like that you can all go through here and you've got your doors and your lock so you can choose it to auto lock as soon as you get above 10 mile an hour it'll lock the van you can do all that there but you probably just want to keep it on page one and you want to keep it on the digital speedometer. View your diesel here, temperature there. This one is the nine speed auto. So press the button, you're in park, bring it all the way down to drive, push it out to go into manual mode. Up to go into reverse, which will bring on your rear view camera on your Xcent head unit. And you've got drive mode, which goes through power, eco or normal. So power holds the gear longer, Gets you up to speed a lot quicker. You leave it in normal. Once you get to speed, you might want to flick it in the eco and it'll just help with saving that little bit extra fuel. Traction controls, so you can turn that off should you be struggling to get off wet grass or gravel. Turn that off and you'll be able to use the accelerator and stop the ESP from kicking in. Padlock locks the doors from the inside when traveling or on a night you want might want to press that button and lock all the doors hazards heated mirrors 12 you've got usbs so you've got a usb c and a standard usb for charging only and then a 12 volt cigarette lighter here the other one is in the top glove box so if you lift this you've got two here for the head unit for the accent, so you can plug your phones into them as well, and it'll pair into here. Mm. Temperature on the outside ring, fan speed must be on at least one or more for the white light to come on, which is the aircon. Distribution, so face, feet, or screen, and whether you're bringing fresh air in or recirculating air. And then 
to operate your Xcent head unit. So this is the XF270 unit. Card in the top for the maps, which is a GPS card, and you'll be able to click on navigation, and you've got a map of where we are now. If you want to go anywhere, press here, new route, address, pop your postcode in the middle box there. So where it says Cookie Bank, which is what we're on, pop your postcode in, select go to town. Select its destination and it will start the count and the route guidance to your destination. If you've been anywhere, it'll be in it'll be in here in your history once you've been there. Radios FM AM, but most people now use DAB. So you've got your list, you've got all your folders. So you've got your national, international, and regional stations. Once you're happy with them press preset and you can save up to six channels or you can revert back to FM if you go somewhere and you can't get a signal for DAB. Top rate your Bluetooth, click on Bluetooth, it's searching for you, you start searching for that on your phone and you want to find Xcent. Once it's found you it'll come up with whoever's iPhone, it'll come up with say it was mine, Callum's iPhone, you'd press pair, then on your phone you want to press pair as well so they pair together and then it'll ask you if you want to download your phone book, just press allow and it'll download all your contacts so that you can press contacts, recent call logs or if you're using it for Apple Music, Spotify, Bluetooth music, you can press music and you can download and it'll use your phone for your music as it doesn't take a CD. Failing that, you can connect via USBs and it'll bring up USB iPod and then you can press camera and it'll view the camera when going forward in drive or any other gear if you were a manual transmission version you'll be able to view the back of the motorhome but you do notice you've got these shortcut buttons as well so you've got nav camera dab alt and bluetooth it's just the easy buttons to press when you're driving and then if you ever need to update it all you need to do is go on the accent website this is your model number find the update for that get a memory stick download the update on the memory stick and pop it into one of the two usbs press setup press other and install software and, you can, and you'll know when it needs a software update because it may go slow and glitchy and the screen might not respond as quick as it used to and all it's telling you is the software needs an update but you can view your software information and it's running v2.5 so if there is an update, all you need to do is update it by downloading on work, download it onto a dongle, a memory stick, popping it into there, load software, press tick, and it'll update the head unit. To black your windscreen out, you just lift the blind up. Like so, and the same on the driver's side and passenger side for the for the windows. <laughs> 